cloud right now. Oh, I see. The sunlight isn't real intense right now because it's... No, it's, it's very prominent. It's uh, still... So, wait, how does this not burn your eyes? How many, how many filters do you have on this? The, well, the, this telescope is a dead... He always down or on slope because Trinity was very sensitive about his height. Uh, this telescope was commissioned in 1908, and it is the mother telescope of all large institutional reflecting telescopes. The telescope was designed by George Willis Ritchie, and Ritchie that you see is the outside. There's a second tower inside each of these structural members. And if you look at it, you can see that it's assembled with rivets. Because at this time, this was commissioned in 1912. It's like one of those uh, cleaning window thing. <laughs> What's that? Noah. Oh, Noah. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that it would, you know, be a little bit larger. But um, let me show you kind of some sunspots that we've had recently. These were last week. These are little guys. And the reason that we've had little tiny sunspots uh, recently is because we're actually in what's called solar minimum. And this is the deepest solar minimum that we've had in decades. Uh, actually almost close to uh, 100 years probably and so during that time uh, there's just, and so the Sun is a big giant ball of plasma the Sun's not actually on fire so if anybody ever says the Sun's a flaming ball of fire that's all we've got <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's Jupiter and so it turns out you can fit about 1 million 200 thousand Earths inside the Sun and uh, you can fit about a, thou a thousand Earths inside of just Jupiter, in fact, just uh, until, well, that's what you would see. And this sunspot group um, was so large um, that it actually survived four rotations of the sun. It's just, you know, you could think of it as like a blob of liquid in space almost, and it's, it's spinning really fast right here. And so what happens is it builds up an enormous amount of stress uh, in the magnetic field of the sun by it spinning around like this. It's almost like taking a handful of rubber bands and just twisting them until they, they break. And so that's kind of what's going on with these. Actually, a whole bunch of information that's encoded in here and also uh, a little bit about sunspots. So when we're looking at this rainbow spectrum, aside from just being beautiful. It is um, beautiful. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, if we look with a magnifying glass of sorts, which we have right here, this is called an analyzer. Uh, we have one of these, you know, aside from Hollywood sending a mission there to, you know, detonate a nuke inside it to restart it or something silly like that. Uh, we can't actually go to the sun um, for obvious reasons. The solar telescope that you just visited. However, modern science is being done here. Uh, this dome and the one over here are two domes of six that are arranged in a Y-shaped array. And in each of these domes is a 40-inch reflecting telescope, and the light from those telescopes is gathered together and it's sent down these pipes. See these pipes? Uh, I pipes? thought it's gas pipes. Those are actually light pipes. Uh, and, uh, Optical. So in the nighttime when they use it, they pump down, take all the air out of the pipes, and then the light is brought together from all these telescopes. The aperture of the telescope array is 1,080 feet. 
So from an aperture point of view, this is still the site of the largest optical telescope in the world. Hundred meet. Oh, that's a telephone. Telephone corner. Wow. Oh, so much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> And the telescope, like the 60, is supported on a mercury float. There's mercury in a tank here, and mercury in a tank up there, and that holds the weight. The design is called an English yoke design, which is very sturdy and very vibration free. It has a disadvantage, however, that it cannot look at by the city, and the mirror blank for the inch is brought up the toll road, or it's a dirt road. So over here, we talked about these telescopes being photographic instruments. This is the film mounting plate, or one of the film mounting plates that allowed the operator to see the engravings on the rings around the um, right ascension and declination axis. And if you look over here, watch what happens when I point this in here. Ooh. You see it? <laughs> so that shows you the optical path. Oof. So light comes from here, 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 and then down, and there's an engraved brass ring. And once it's set, it tracks. Now this is the third generation of electronic control. This was designed and built by volunteers here at the, at the observatory. And this now controls the telescope and controls the dome. This screen shows the actual right ascension and declination as well as the altitude and azimuth of the telescope. And that's just a plain old PC, but it has a um, planetarium program on it so they can pick their targets off of that. Okay, by show of hands, how many people can the telescope? <laughs> it's not how many people think the building's moving? The whole dome is moving. <laughs> you sure you didn't break it? <laughs> yeah, plates. So which one should we start? Huh? Which one we start? Oh, maybe start from there. I'm sorry. Company picnic. 